Okay, if you're here, you're going to make a game called Doom on the Broom. So let's go ahead and click the Create button in Scratch. And let's immediately name it correctly. So put your last name. Again, not my last name, your last name. And I'm just going to do DOB for Doom on the Broom. Uh, but you can uh, just give it something so you know what it is. All right, so first let's just set the, let's do the stage real quick and set the uh, backdrop right now. So what I want to do here is go ahead and click on stage and then click on backdrops. And then we're going to pick a new, I can actually just do it from, from here. Uh, choose backdrop and we're going to type in woods and select the woods as our backdrop and that's a nice one right there. Okay, we're not going to need the cat so just go ahead and delete that sprite right there. Let's go ahead and delete that first backdrop so this is the only one we have here on the stage and that's perfect all right we're going to use several variables in this game let's just make them all right now so click on variables so click it once you're going to make a variable called game speed it should be available to all the sprites and click ok we're going to make a second variable we're going to call that score it should be available to all sprites go ahead and click cloud variable on this one and then finally, one more variable, we're gonna call it lives and click okay, available for all sprites. This one does not need to be a cloud variable. Uh, turn off the game speed one, uncheck that one. So the only two that we wanna have here are score and lives. And if you wanna move them on the screen, you can. These are two things that the player is gonna to need uh, to pay attention to as they are playing the game. All right, click on the stage again. We're gonna add a little bit of code right here. So let's go ahead and bring out when green flag is clicked and choose a forever and then you're going to go ahead and under looks there is a change color effect and we're going to change that by one and what that does is it'll just make the background sort of change make it a little spooky uh, as we go through okay all right very good so now let's make our main character we're going to make a new sprite but something weird is going on with this particular character. We can't pick her from here. So just go ahead and uh, click the paintbrush. But we're not actually going to paint. Once we have that, click on Costumes tab right here. And in this area down on the lower left, click Choose a Costume here and type in Witch. And we want to pick this witch right here that's on the broom. I don't know why you can't pick her from over here. But just go ahead and delete that first costume now so that this is the costume uh, that we are working on for her, okay? All right, so now, before we start coding the witch, we're actually gonna bring in an enemy first. So we're gonna make a new sprite. We're gonna click the magnifying glass and we are gonna bring in a bat. So click the bat, please. Now, when we go to the bat costume, you're gonna notice that the bat has four costumes and we're gonna make use of all of these uh, as part of this. So in the code area, let's bring in a when green flag is clicked. We're going to go forever under control. We're going to go to looks and we're going to do next costume. And I think I just passed it. There we go. Next costume. And we're going to do a weight block here so that they it doesn't change too quickly. And we're just going to do 0 0.1 seconds. Okay, and if we preview that right now, you should see the bat is flapping, which is what we want right there. If you change that value to a different number, it'll change how quickly the, the, uh, the costumes will rotate. All right, let's go back to the witch. By the way, she's called Sprite One. Let's, let's name her witch. You have to do a better job of remembering to name things. <clears throat> All right, so when green flag clicked, we're going to set up our variables right now. So bring out set and we are going to set the score to zero. We are going to set, bring out another block, set lives to three. And finally set game speed to one. Now the lives and uh, score are pretty obvious how they work. The game speed, I'll kind of explain that to you once we start uh, using that. Basically, that's a variable we're going to use to change how fast things start to move in the game and to increase the difficulty the longer that we go. All right, the which is a little too big where she's at right now, so we're going to go into uh, looks and we're going to set size to 35%. We are going to make sure that she's in the very center of the screen, so we're going to go to motion and grab that go to XY block and we're going to want that to be zero, 00, so that she's directly in the center of the screen. 
We want her to point in the direction of 90, so she's always facing the same way to start the game. Then we want to show to make sure that she's visible on the screen. And then we're gonna add a forever block at the very end of this. So forever, we're gonna put a couple of if then statements in there. So if then, I'm gonna put two of them in here right now. Make sure, don't put them inside each other. Just make sure they're both in the forever block. So the first one, under sensing, we're gonna find the, the key space pressed. We're gonna make that left arrow. So if the left arrow is pressed, we're gonna go into motion and we're gonna find the counterclockwise one, the one where it's going uh, the opposite way that a clock goes. So we're going to bring that turn 15 degrees, but we're going to, we don't want it to be the same the whole game. So we're actually gonna put an operator in here so find the multiplication operator. So there's four at the top, plus, minus, multiply, divide. Get the multiplication one and put that in where it says 15 degrees. And we're going to turn game speed times two degrees. So at the beginning of the game, the game speed is one. So one times two is two. So the witch will turn two, two degrees at a time. Later on, the game speed's gonna increase so she'll be able to turn faster. All right, we're gonna do the same thing for the next one except for the right arrow. So again, we are gonna grab the key right arrow pressed. We're going to grab a turn clockwise this time. And then once again, get that multiplication operator, put that in the 15 degrees, and again, it's gonna be game speed times two. Oops, I just pushed that out, let me do that again game speed times two. And just type that in. Go ahead and run it. I'm gonna move the bat aside right now so you can see the witch. So I'm pressing the right and left arrow for her to spin around right now. So the witch is gonna protect herself. She's gonna need some fireballs uh, in order to protect herself that she's gonna be able to shoot out of her broom. So we're gonna create a new sprite and do a search for ball. It's actually right here, you can just click that. Uh, let's call this Fireball. Let's go into the costumes, and the only one we need is the first one, so let's just delete the other ones. For, we're going to have this be gold. Okay, so here's some code that we want to put into the Fireball. So let's go ahead <clears throat> and bring out a when green flag is clicked. We want the Fireballs to go to the witch, so find under the uh, motion category. You're looking for go to and change that from random position to which so they'll be attached to the witch for point in direction we want the fireballs to point in the direction of the witch so for point in direction we're gonna go ahead then and all right sorry about that so point in direction and then under sensing you are looking for the, uh, the piece of code that it'll say of in the middle. And by default, it's backdrop of stage, but put that into the point in direction. And we are going to change stage to which, and then you will get the choice of direction. Oh, not costume number, direction of which. So this way the balls will, uh, the fireballs will shoot out whatever direction uh, the witch is facing. Okay. Next, we are going to, um, what do we have to add here? Oh, sorry, we needed to move 20 steps. So go to motion, you're gonna say move 20 steps because what will happen is that's the amount that, uh, we want the fireballs to come right out of the tip of her broom. So by moving them, when we, when we say go to witch, they're in the center of the witch. By moving 20 steps, they'll move forward a little bit, so it'll look like they're coming right out of the uh, right out of the witch's uh, broom. We're gonna then click on looks and go to show. So we will show the fireball. Now we need a repeat block, and it's going to be a repeat until. So you got to scroll down a little bit. So repeat until. And then in the sensing area, you're looking for touching, and it's gonna to be touching the edge. So the fireball should travel until they hit the end of, end, 
excuse me, edge of the screen. And what we, want, what we want them to do is travel 10 steps. If you make that number bigger, uh, they'll travel faster. And then finally, uh, the very thing we want to do under control is delete this clone. All right, as usual, I have always make at least one mistake in these videos that I make. So I've made a bit of a mistake here, but it's easy to fix. Everything that's in this, when this green flag is clicked, we need to pull that off that. This is gonna go somewhere else. It's gonna go in this sprite, but just not attach this when this green flag is clicked. So when the green flag is clicked, uh, go ahead and under looks, we're gonna set size to 10%. Not 100 to 10%. These are going to be small. And then click hide. Because we're actually going to create clones of this fireball instead of the fireball itself. So what needs to be on top of this piece of code is when I start as a clone. Which is right. Is it in control? There it is. When I start as a cl clone in control. So basically what this is doing is we're going to be able to shoot a lot of fireballs at once by making them clone so they travel across uh, the screen. Okay, so let's take a look at how, what this looks like. For to shoot the fireballs, we're going to have to go back to the witch and we're going to put some code into the witch so that uh, she'll shoot the fireballs. So go ahead and do another one green flag clicked. Bring out a forever block. And in this case, we want to bring out an if then statement. So if then, in sensing, bring out the uh, key space pressed. And we are going to use the space bar for this. So it should say key space, space pressed. What we want to do is we want to create a clone of the fireball. So under control. We're going to create clone of fireball. And then, well, let me show you what this looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. So now notice, if I hold down the space bar, I can shoot basically an infinite number of fireballs. And that's not really what you want. That makes the game too easy. So what we want to do is say, OK, you can shoot one fireball at a time. You can shoot it as fast as you can press the keyboard key but you can't just hold it down to shoot them. So we're gonna bring out a wait until and put that right underneath, uh, create a clone of fireball, and then, okay, bring out a knot, and then in sensing, key space is not pressed, basically. So now if we run this, I'm holding down this, the space bar, and I'm only able to shoot one at a time, but if I hammer it, I can shoot them really fast. All right, so now you have pretty much the fireball and the witch set up. The next set of videos will go over how we're going to get some enemies to come in here and battle them.